OpenAI's rate of growth continues to increase as the company hits a $2 billion revenue run rate. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. One of the questions after Sam Altman was fired and then rehired was whether it would impact the company's ability to sell into the enterprise. Think about it. If the company was subject to these sort of disruptions, would big enterprise or business buyers think to themselves, maybe I should go with someone else? Well, apparently those concerns were a little bit overblown, because in December, according to the Financial Times, OpenAI hit a $2 billion revenue run rate that is up significantly from just a couple months earlier and makes the company one of the fastest growing in history. Now, on the one hand, there is no shortage of companies who are competing for the big enterprise AI model space. But at the same time, right now, it feels to me like we are very much in the phase of the market development where the amount of new capital coming into the space, in other words, the amount of new demand, is significantly bigger than any sort of competition between the existing labs, i.e. it's a time when all of the very small handful of companies that are offering these sort of tools to the enterprise is likely to do very, very well. Now, of course, lots of people have pointed out just how remarkable this is in the context of Silicon Valley and point out that its revenue is growing much faster than previous companies like Amazon, Google, or Meta. Now, one of the ways that OpenAI makes money is through its partnership with Microsoft, although frankly, it makes a lot more money when enterprises go direct, as Microsoft keeps a much bigger cut when enterprise buyers work through Azure. Last week, Azure announced a set of new offerings all based on OpenAI technology, including the Assistance API, new text-to-speech capabilities, updated models for GPT-4 Turbo and GPT-3.5 Turbo, new embeddings models, and updates to the fine-tuning API. Basically, this is bringing Azure-offered versions of OpenAI services into parity with OpenAI Direct services. The relationship between Microsoft and OpenAI continues to be one of the fascinating updates and developments of this AI space, with a big element of both friend and frenemy in how it plays out. One other interesting little Microsoft update, apparently they are testing a new super-resolution AI upscaling tool for gamers. The feature would increase the video and image quality for supported games, and do so theoretically without sacrificing playing quality. Upscaling is actually becoming a very important use case for AI very early, as you can tell from Magnific and all of these other AI upscaler tools that are coming out of standalone startups, as well as the way that upscalers are coming to Midjourney, Dolly 3, and other tools like that as a core feature. Now, one last headline referencing Microsoft. Yesterday, we talked about the company's ad for Copilot in the Super Bowl, and at least from a download standpoint, it seems like people were paying attention. On Apple's App Store on Monday, all three of the most downloaded free apps were companies that had advertised heavily during the Super Bowl, those companies being Paramount Plus, Copilot, and Timu. Now, of course, how much that was an initial burst versus how much people will stick around with Copilot will be interesting to see. Moving over to the world of patents. There has been an ongoing discussion from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office around whether AI-created works could be patented or trademarked. And on Monday, we got a clarification on that, basically saying that inventions that were created with the aid of AI could indeed be patented, but that the important thing about it was that the patent should focus on human contributions, that it couldn't be primarily an AI-created work because, they said, patents function to incentivize and reward human ingenuity. Patent and Trademark Office Director Kathy Vidal said in a blog post, the right balance must be struck between awarding patent protection to promote human ingenuity and investment for AI-assisted inventions while not unnecessarily locking up innovation for future developments. Effectively, we are living in the gray area here and we're just going to keep having to figure it out as it comes along. Now, in a slightly related story, in the copyright lawsuit swirling right now, Defendant Stability, Midjourney, and Runway have all hit back with a flurry of filings that are arguing that the case should be thrown out with prejudice. VentureBeat writes, yesterday, lawyers for the defendant's stability AI, Midjourney, Runway, and DeviantArt filed a flurry of new motions, including some to dismiss the case entirely. All the companies sought variously to introduce new evidence to claim that the class action copyright infringement case filed against them last year by a handful of visual artists and photographers should be dropped entirely and dismissed with prejudice. Trying to sum up a very complicated case, VentureBeat writes, in a nutshell, the artists argue in their lawsuits that the AI companies, by scraping the artworks that the artists publicly posted on their websites and other online forums, or obtaining them from research databases, and using them to train AI image generation models that can produce new, highly similar works, is an infringement of their copyright on said original artworks. Continuing, VB writes, the company's new counterargument largely boils down to the fact that the AI models they make or offer are not themselves copyrights of any artwork but rather reference the artworks to create an entirely new product, image-generating code, and furthermore that the models themselves do not replicate the artist's original work exactly, and not even similarly unless they are explicitly instructed or prompted by users to do so. Furthermore, the companies argue that the artists have not shown any other third parties replicating their work identically using the AI models. 
Now, on whether these are good arguments, the VentureBeat author makes clear to remind us that they are not a lawyer, but they say, I do think the latest filings from the web and AI companies make a strong case. And that's broadly the sentiment that I've seen on Twitter slash X as well. Now, again, this is just the next chapter in what is going to be a very ongoing saga, so we will just continue to keep an eye on it. Over from the adoption files, a new study from a college job search site suggests that Gen Z are thinking that AI could be a way for them to get ahead in the workplace. Axios writes AI native Gen Zers are comfortable on the cutting edge. From the survey, a third of this year's seniors and more than half of tech majors said they plan to use generative AI in their careers. Members of Gen Z are more likely to want to learn AI skills than boomers by 1.6x or Gen X by 1.1x, according to LinkedIn research as well. Said Valerie Capers Workman, the chief legal officer at Handshake, we're not seeing nervousness among Gen Zers. They see it as an opportunity to be on the cutting edge of a transformational technology. They are actually digging in on AI, she said. The most important headline is they are hyper aware that it is mission critical for them to be able to have the best opportunities in the employment space. Globally, a LinkedIn survey found that 48% of Gen Zers and 52% of Millennials, quote, believe that AI will help move their career forward by providing faster access to knowledge and insights, which will help them be more confident at work. Indeed, what we've seen so far, too, is that one of the places that AI has the biggest impact is with early career professionals who catch up faster to their mid and late career colleagues with the help of generative AI. Now, given how much of AI policy this year is going to be shaped by AI sentiment, I'm always interested to see this type of survey couple quick feature and product updates. Adobe and TikTok have announced that TikTok's AI-powered creative assistant is now available within Adobe Express. Writes TechCrunch, with Adobe Express, creators have access to templates, Adobe stock video clips, audio stickers, and an Adobe Express TikTok video creator. With the new creative assistant add-on, creators will get access to TikTok insights about trending hashtags and AI-powered tools all within Adobe Express. If, as we've discussed many times on this show, one of the big themes of 2024 is integration, this is a great example of how companies are putting their AI tools directly into a context that is for a specific use case or purpose, in this case, TikTok video creation. Another really interesting feature announcement comes from Eleven Labs and is actually more than just a feature. Eleven Labs is now opening up a marketplace by which voice actors can create a clone of their voice, which can then be used in projects from users around the world and make them money as it happens. Eleven Labs writes, here's how it works. Head to the voice lab and upload 30 plus minutes of audio. Name and describe your voice, set your price and usage parameters, add your payment details and get paid when it's used. The response to this will almost certainly be a Rorschach test for people's thoughts about AI. On the one hand, people will be rightly concerned that the companies that choose to use this AI generated version of voices are companies that previously might have paid those voice actors for them to create those voices directly. And almost certainly they get paid less for this AI version than they would for performing something themselves. The counter-argument is that this might open up entirely new buyers that would never have bought a voice actor before, but who are now financially able to do so, and so thus this opens up an entirely new stream of revenue that doesn't necessarily diminish that direct voice acting either. Ultimately, of course, this is the type of thing that we will just have to see play out in practice, but from Eleven Labs' standpoint, it seems like a pretty cool, interesting, and valuable update that could create some real interesting marketplace network effects around the platform. However, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI breakdown.